Joining me in studio today is the former public protector, Busisiwe Mkwebane. And uh, she's here with me. Uh, greetings, uh, Advocate Mkwebane, and welcome to the EFF uh, podcast. Thank you. Thank you um, so much. Uh, Nzaku. I love that name. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you for inviting me. Yes, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you making time for us. Yeah. So officially, you are a ground force. I am a fighter. Yeah. Yes. Talk us through uh, definitely, that. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Talk us through that. Um, yeah. Why did you join the EFF? You know, I joined the EFF. If because when checking um, the seven cardinal pillars, yes. they were very much, um, I could relate to them. Uh, actually, as the former public protector, my work, um, uh, actually not uh, yeah. from my work, but then when I was interviewed for the position, I remember I used, uh, I, I said I would want to, help South Africans, oh, yes. especially the poor, the marginalized, actually to deal with triple yeah. challenges and inequality. And I remember um, the deputy president of the EFF currently uh, was asking, why do you speak like that? Are you a politician? You know, And I said, no, because I know that um, uh, uh, our people are facing a lot of struggles yes. and I would be helping them uh, as the public protector uh, you know, to contribute uh, to the fight uh, against oppression. So when I checked the seven cardinal pillars yeah. of EF, EFF, I mean the nationalization of um, mines. the mines, the mines. banks, um, the expropriation of land um, and without compensation, yes. uh, building state capacity, yes. um, the issue of uh, the inequality as far as education is concerned. concerned. I mean, even to this day, <laughs> what's worse is that so, so we've got two uh, streams or two systems. I mean, you know, there's uh, the national certificate you, and then there's this other one which uh, for uh, the private schools. And I think we need a situation where there's equality. We yes. need a situation where every and child... free education. Free education, well. yeah. indeed. Yeah. Free health care. True. Quality. True. Not just a situation where it's free, but when you go to the clinic or hospital, there's yeah. no even a panado. Yes. So the issue of human settlement, I mean, uh, the issue of uh, uh, people being provided with dignified um, a human settlement or houses. Mm -hmm. So the biggest one was then uh, looking at the, uh, my experience and I said, I can contribute and especially on the issue of dealing with the issues of corruption. Um, And I mean, as a power protector, one has been doing that for the past seven years. True. Mm. And we are more than uh, happy to have you as a, a member because the organization is going to, benefit enormously with your experience as the public protector and all. And there's been a, a halabaloo, uh, people, you know, uh, criticizing you for joining the EFF. How are you handling the, the backlash? Um, you know what? I'm even not uh, worried about the noise which mm-hmm. is there. Um, you know, uh, in in Debele in, Situ, Umundu in Agasi, Mali, Oh, okay. I understand. I'm in my I'm in my way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, section 19 of the Constitution mm. is very clear. Yes. I mean, I'm a South African citizen. I have the right to choose, join any political party, even establish my own political party. Yes. Yes. So, I'm exercising my right as a South African citizen. And I had to wait uh, for my term to officially mm-hmm. end. And now I am free yes. and I can decide and, whatever and I can I, do. You know, it's mind-boggling how the the attack are, you know, meted out at you because you're not the first uh, professional to join a political party. Uh, you would know Glenis uh, Breitenbach. Breitenbach. Yeah. Yes, she, 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 she resigned as the prosecutor. Uh, for the NPA, she joined the and DA. And she even was resigned yes. while she was being investigated. You I see? mean, um, she then uh, was just taken by the DA yes. and then she was the uh, a member of parliament, yes, po- uh, Justice Portfolio Committee. Currently, yeah. she's the shadow minister of justice. And the media as well. No the one way said they, anything. Po- they portrayed the uh, move from NPA to uh, DA, it was like she dumped 
you know, NPA. But with you, the the the, the headline, the angling of the story is completely different. Uh, different. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just something that I, raises eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Because even uh, Advocate Gerenel, Uh, is now with the uh, the Afri Afri Forum, Forum, definitely. Yes, and no one is saying anything. It's fine, yeah. but again, it shows you the deep rooted um, issues of uh, racism in mm -hmm. the country, and uh, we've got the South Africa is uh, two worlds actually. Yes. Um, they, they, they are those who can do whatever they can do. In yeah. essence, you, you you're talking about your own freedom of association. Freedom of us, I mean, Section 19 is very clear. Mm. Freedom to join any political party, freedom to be a politician, to establish your own political party. So I was still saying during the the, yep. the, the, the issue of my the inquiry mm -hmm. of uh, being called incompetent and whatever, I mean, have you seen any um, News 24, any nah, nah, uh, white nah, journalists nah, criticizing who Andre the Raider? I mm -hmm. mean, we are in this mess as a country. Um, Lord I shedding, mean, rolling yes, blackouts. It actually is blackouts. So, but nothing was said about Mark jo uh, Jost. Uh, nothing is being, I mean, they are never in the newspapers every day. Nah. So, I think we have a serious challenge in the yes. country, but. Um, Here we are. Yeah. I'm happy yeah, to yeah, be yeah. the fighter. Yeah, you are a fighter indeed. Mm. So let's look at the the, the role of uh, Chapter 9 institution and the mandate thereof. Um, what does it mean to a layman like myself? Mm. Uh, I remember in 2018, I think the first time I met you mm. in Drikop in Bakersford, mm. we had our interview. Mm. In fact, I shared a picture of that uh, interview on, on, on X. Mm. So you were doing a roadshow. Yes. Uh, perhaps if you can talk us through the role and the mandate of the Chapter 9 institution, particularly the Office of the Public Protector. Yeah. Hence, I. that's why I said I joined EFF because mm -hmm. I could see what they are doing for communities as well. You mm -hmm. are very much Im impactful. You are there. You listen to the communities. So as the Public Protector, actually not only the Public Protector, yes. Section 181 of the Constitution Um, provides for all those uh, 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 institutions which mm -hmm. are supporting uh, democracy. Yes. So those institutions are provided for in Chapter 9. Yes. Hence, you will hear people saying Chapter 9. So when you go to Chapter 9 of the Constitution, then you'll find the Auditor General, okay. the Public Protector, um, the Human Rights Commission, the mm -hmm. Gender Commission, ICASA, IEC, Uh, the Commission for Religious and Linguistics, mm. um, then uh, those institutions are there to support and strengthen constitutional democracy. Okay. And those institutions are there to work and, you know, point um, gaps and wrong things which mm -hmm. public servants are doing okay. and say to them, can we handhold you? Can mm. we work with you? I used to say most of the time when I was conducting the very same road shows, Because U Public Protector is provided for in mm -hmm. terms of Section uh, 182, and there U Public Protector is responsible for investigating maladministration, um, improper conduct in state mm -hmm. affairs, and uh, there's additional uh, responsibilities in terms of the Public Protector Act to investigate. E maladministration is broken down into undue delay, abuse of power, okay. abuse of state resources, uh, capricious behavior. And uh, uh, the, that then assist um, government to make sure that uh, when they provide services, they provide services speedily without uh, a delay. So our Human Rights Commission then will mm -hmm. then look into their realization and people are enjoying those rights. I mean, issues of voting, uh, um, the we've got a lot of farm dwellers, uh, mm -hmm. uh, farm workers, and the way they are treated uh, yeah. in the farms. So public protector has no jurisdiction over private companies. Okay. You cannot investigate court judgments. But then the interesting thing is that people thought as well, you cannot question uh, the administration in the court environment, okay. which you can, because well, you can. that's a, a, because a, 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 it, it, it's an it, improper it conduct. It boils down to your, your scope of work. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what the public protector does. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's get to politics a bit. Uh, 2017, uh, in fact, 2019, your report on uh, CR17 campaign, 
uh, you found that the president, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, is obliged to disclose mm. the donors who funded his uh, campaign. And uh, from there on, uh, there's been, for a lack of a better phrase, sort of a tension or bitterness between you and the sitting president. Would you say that report is the one that, uh, in fact, led to this bitter relationship or the uh, other reports, perhaps the mm-hmm. APSA Bangkok uh, matter? Yeah, um, p- um, maybe to answer earlier as well, the issue of three COP. Uh, okay. The public protector okay. conducts road shows. Okay. The public protector then listens to communities. Yes. I see EFF currently is listening to various sectors uh, to say these mm-hmm. are the challenges and then we resolve them on the spot or then if it involves corruption and whatever okay. or systemic challenges, then we investigate and come up with the rec- uh, report for recommendations. Mm-hmm. So, um, Hence is one of my my what I'm going to be contributing okay. uh, to the EFF. Okay. Coming back to the reports, the biggest challenge I faced as the public protector was when I issued the CX report, mm-hmm. the Reserve Bank report. It was in 2017. Mm. The Busasa one was in 2019. Yes. So the 2017, that's when I issued that report. It was investigated by Matonzela uh, for the past six, five, six years. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, being uh, efficient, not wanting backlogs, then yes. I had to make sure that we finalize that report. Mm-hmm. That's where then hell broke loose. I was attacked in all the sectors, malicious damage to my property. That's when I then um, I was put um, with State House uh, because mm-hmm. of all the challenges and because they were saying, uh, let's improve security in your house. I said, I don't want the Encanta story. <laughs> and uh, they checked and options. That cloud. Yes. Then I was um, uh, hosted to get, um, in the state with state house, uh, mm-hmm. which uh, within the uh, subs, SOPs, that is yeah. possible. Then come 2019, I then uh, a complaint was lodged by the ATM, mm-hmm. a political party, because as a power protector, another mandate is under the Executive Members Ethics Act, mm-hmm. which uh, comes directly from Section 96 of the Constitution, which says um, how you need to conduct yourself as an executive. The executive is your cabinet uh, ministers, your MECs, your president, deputy president. Yes. So um, then the complaint is only lodged by members of parliament, not any other person. And that one, I can't go out and do own initiative. Mm -hmm. Um, Under the Public Protector Act, I can do that. But under this one, the complaint must be lodged. Because I'm I'm just clarifying that because people thought you are a politician, you are functional, as if I go around and and, and just investigate the president. So that uncovered a lot um, of, um, uh, you know, um, corruption, uh, because all the way the behavior of the president then was questionable. And he, he did all those when he was the deputy president. And yes. it's very clear in the report mm-hmm. that when he was the deputy president, he was obligated to even declare all those donations. Yes. He said, no, he never, uh, uh, he, uh, he, he didn't know who are the donors. Mm-hmm. That's what he said to, 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 to when we were investigating. But he went to court to... Seal the document. Uh, that's a problem. <laughs> Actually, this. before court, yeah. Well, it's after court. Yes, um, they seal the the the, the documents. Not even in court, mm-hmm. in chambers, which again is questionable. Why that judge um, allowed that? You know. <laughs> yeah. And we queried that, but then it was sealed. And uh, with on the commission, he then said, um, "Yeah, I know the donors is not this mm-hmm. money." but it's this particular money. Whereas mm. a constitutional court, even Uch- uh, Chief Justice Mukweng Mukweng said, you know, you are more concerned about how did Mkwebane get the emails mm-hmm. where he was himself saying, uh, pay this so much, go down to yes. travel where, and then this much must be transferred where and everything. Mm. So he never declared that. Mm. And, and it's a problem. Yes, definitely. Because it also affects service delivery. Mm. Uh, if, for example, uh, so and so donates to a sitting president for their campaign uh, to become president, 
uh, and we don't know who is that, the next thing the person receives a tender, which the EFF seeks to abolish, by the way. The mm. EFF wants to abolish tenders and build... And builds, develop state capacity. Yeah, yes. State capacity. Mm. So it is uncalled for. And I want to talk about the uh, impartiality of the Office of the Public Protector. You'd know about the uh, Palapala report. Mm. 191 pages. Mm. And it exonerated uh, Ramaphosa of any wrongdoing, that he did not breach any uh, executive ethics code. Do you think that investigation was handled without fear or favor in the best interest of the uh, people of South Africa? Definitely not. Um, I think uh, the way the investigation was conducted, it was um, uh, so... Because there was um, actually before then uh, Chief Justice uh, Ngobo mm-hmm. and uh, um, Judge Masipa and uh, Advocate um, Matlape, mm-hmm. I see. they in, uh, collated all the information and the evidence yes. again from the ATM and other political parties. They said he has a prima facie to answer. Yes. The very same president acknowledged a limp up that, you know, yes, I sell During cattle, the conference yes, of the ANC, yes. I sell and there was a time where he was addressing mm-hmm. the Angola society. I'm the president of the Angola society. This is my mm-hmm. passion. Actually, I don't like the other part. Now, um, when the complaint was lodged, mm-hmm. I issued those 31 questions, the famous 31 questions. Yes. And uh, again, trying to make sure that we investigate the matter speedily mm-hmm. so that there's no dark cloud hanging over him and we um, deal with the matter quickly. You know, um, then, you know, the following day I was suspended. I mean, mm-hmm. he couldn't even wait for the court to um, issue the judgment about me um, interdicting his suspension. Mm-hmm. Well, he sent a letter um, intending to suspend me. Coming forward, they, then I'm on suspension. The mm-hmm. investigation is done. The report is issued. Um, the report is riddled with a lot of um, flaws because... In terms of Section 96 of the Constitution, it's very clear. Mm -hmm. As an executive, it doesn't say you must have a conflict or you must... It's very clear. You cannot uh, conduct any work. You must not expose yourself to a risk of a conflict. And Wes, um, you were speaking about the Busasa, people who donated. Indeed, those Mm -hmm. who donated, a lot of them got contracts in Mm -hmm. government. And even the president benefited because... He was the deputy president and he became the president yes. because of the, 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 the donations and yes. the funding. Mm-hmm. That report indeed um, has a lot of uh, flaws. Question, uh, flaws. Yeah. Um, uh, it's good that uh, as a public protector, you operate uh, without fear, favor. You need to be impartial. And as well as a public protector, it's impossible for you to even abuse mm-hmm. your powers. You don't have unf- unf- unfettered powers because... Mm-hmm. People have a right to take you on review. Yes. And it's a democracy. That's how it operates. But unfortunately, uh, with me, it was like uh, pointing at me or as if I am the one, firstly, who conducts the investigations, mm. which I don't. You're just doing your work. Actually, I don't even conduct the investigations. Yeah. It's done by the senior investigators. Mm-hmm. So when you come and say you are factional or you are impartial, mm. it means everyone who touched that investigation it's also factional, mm. or I have imposed on them that this is how uh, you will be finding, and yes. of which is not the case because I will guide and say, but did you look at this, get evidence on this, get evidence on this. Mm-hmm. So I think that report um, was not um, properly done. Yeah, and your first impression on the establishment of the Section 194 inquiry, which investigated your uh, unfitness to hold office. Uh, I know you had issues with the chairperson, uh, Janti. Uh, what was your initial impression of that inquiry? I remember when the process started in 2020. Yes. In February, Amazon uh, lodging that motion and I had to be the one who's educating the then speaker, Tandi Mundisa, to say, no, you cannot just directly do this. Mm-hmm. You need Dama rules. Mm. Then they stopped, they went back, and we said, you need rules, and you cannot persecute me mm-hmm. or deal with issues which happened prior uh, the me charge, uh, charging me. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. then they had to find a way to get somebody within the office mm-hmm. with Hamilton Samuel who assaulted the old man from uh, Mr. Siabi. And then uh, Mr. Siabi uh, won the case. Samuel was found guilty for assault. And mm-hmm. then Mr. Siabi was suing Samuel, but suing the institution. That's when mm-hmm. I discovered good, there's something like this. Okay. So Samuel then thought I am paging him or something like that. And then he went to uh, in, in cahoots with Ambomazon. Then they brought the charges. Yes. And when they brought the charges, then they added the HR-related issues. Judgment was still pending by then. But then they proceeded. They then appointed the judges, Upesin Kabinde, Unsebeza, no, some advocate uh, Deval. Um, then they said, I've got a prima facie case to answer. We queried the appointment of a judge. And uh, that matter actually is pending a AU um, mm-hmm. a commission because um, um, I... I at the constitutional court, it was thrown out, and then um, finally I took it there. Yeah. So my issue was I indicated that I'm participating under protest, and uh, uh, it was very clear from the beginning. Yes. Then we continued. 18 to 20 witnesses were called, testified orally, mm-hmm. and after 24, 23, 24 witnesses, it, including mine, it was my turn now to testify. Actually, before then, um, then I lodged the application for Umailham. I discovered mm-hmm. Umailham um, is the actually through the EFF, oh, Honorable Maud, I say, yes. but you did you declare that you are the husband to Mazon? Then um, how am I supposed to sit there? So from the onset, the process was unfair. It was unfair. And Wes, when they started the process, the rules they in the rules they said um, it, it, they are implement they are dealing with the Amazon uh, motion. Mm-hmm. Now uh, entertaining everything, I was blamed. Good how you were delaying the process. Who yibo about delay the process and calling all the staff members mm. to come and testify about things, which it was like now a CCMA yeah. process, but. We are here now. Mm-hmm. That matter is pending. SCA Yoguti, the husband of Mazon, was one of the deciding persons. Ujanji uh, himself was very biased. We could prove Uguti. When I appeared before the portfolio committee, he even said it before, Uguti, I'm incompetent and everything. He's appointed. And I discovered lately, Uguti, he was the one of the campaign's managers during the Cigar 17 process. Oh. So all these things were, you know, West, you know, So him being the appointed late. to mm. chair the, the inquiry was sort of a handshake. Mm. Okay. Yes. Wow. So now yeah. I want us to look at the allegations about the, the bribes because there were bribes, uh, there were allegations about uh, the bribes. Mm. How, how far, I understand there was a case that was opened. Yes, um, my husband opened a case um, yeah. uh, of extortion, bribery, that matter is still being investigated, and mm-hmm. I think we will have to follow up um, on that particular matter. Mm-hmm. And uh, the good thing is that uh, we will still have to go back to the very same public protector to, mm-hmm. if they are delaying to investigate, for them to fast track that investigation. Yeah. Um, the other issue is that you remember uh, I lodged a complaint with the ethics committee. Mm-hmm. They then came back and said, Janji and Majordina uh, well exonerated. West, they didn't even uh, uh, acquire the recordings from me, but in their judgment or in their outcome, they said they've listened to those recordings. Mm. If you listen to the recordings, I don't know how many times the late Tina Jumat Peterson saying, Janji and Majordina are angry. They were not appointed as ministers. They came and said, you know, pay them 200,000 each. Pay me yeah. is very greedy. Uh, will want and money. I remem- and, yeah. Yeah. and I remember the TG, Commissar, uh, uh, Umpila mm. Mawutwe, argued that, in fact, uh, Janti must be recused from that uh, inquiry. And then, they insisted. Yeah, we requested yeah. that he must be recu- he must recuse himself. Yeah. He refused. Yeah. And um, we then uh, said, uh, because he was saying, no, you must even bring the application. Yes. You know, that process was so riddled with a yeah. lot of, incons- uh, well, unfairness, illegality. And Tina Jumat Peterson said, no, now, because uh, they are blaming Janji that he's moving slow, they are going to change. Yeah. We are no longer going to testify orally because I only testified, defended myself on two charges. Mm-hmm. I'm still going to defend myself on three charges. Yeah. That was never allowed. 
they proceeded, they withdrew my attorneys uh, or Chane attorneys in cahoots with the CEO of Public mm. Protector South Africa, Ms. Spanioni and uh, Advocate Galega, the acting PP. And frustrating my issues. And uh, while they withdrew legal representation, it was, yeah. so it was just, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and mm. I understand the Advocate uh, Dalimpofu, Senior Counsel, has been um, uh, your uh, legal representing, uh, uh, they've been providing legal representation mm. throughout. Mm. Do you think uh, they fought a good fight? I understand uh, the outcomes, obviously, they have been uh, somehow uh, orchestrated yeah. by the, 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 the establishment. But do you think they have, um, you know, fought a good fight? Hey, they did more mm. than uh, what they were expected to do and being abused by the very same portfolio committee mm. and especially their colleague who advocate Bauer and Mayosi, um, yeah. you know, uh, splashing all their legal fees. And especially because when I was the public protector, I had to make sure as well that, mm. you know, it's one thing to say you are dealing with empowering black um, legal professionals is another to just have a lip service. So, for me, it was part of the process to contribute in changing the mm -hmm. status quo. And uh, um, they had to splash their legal fees. They had to uh, treat them um, well with uh, disdain. And, dis, uh, you know, it was so uh, mm -hmm. painful to watch as mm -hmm. well how mm -hmm. uh, the members of the of the, of the, of, of, of the uh, yeah. Section 194 were treating them. So I must also indicate that, you know, uh, Advocate Dalimpofu and uh, Advocate Matlape and, and Shabalala, uh, they are insulting him sometimes and say, yeah, he's uh, eating all the monies and everything. Mm. In a number of cases yeah. uh, where, which were brought before court, they did them pro bono. Even now with the the appeal we SCA regarding Umail no change. They will, as advocates, they will say, we can do it. Uh, yes, possibly whatever you will find, pay the attorneys. Yes. Uh, because, and and yeah. I must say outright, the EFF as, as well has been providing legal uh, assistance to some of the cases that you have been, uh, you know, taken to court. And uh, yeah, the EFF has always uh, been rallying behind you, uh, showing uh, maximum support. Yeah, one if, of the cases is that one of SARS. Yes, um, yes the rogue unit. Where, yes, yes. Uh, the so-called rogue unit. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, also then took it to court. I mean, EFF, even during my predecessor's time, then Gandla, mm -hmm. remember, they are the ones who took it to court. Yes. Which is good because then if there's any uh, uh, issue to be interp interpreted or then there's questions, mm -hmm. uh, questionable uh, uh, um, issues, uh, which needs clarity. It was fine to take it to court, but unfortunately, um, with the courts, I was treated differently. Yeah, and uh, a lot of uh, judgments, or the, not a lot, few judgments. I mean, it was only five judgments mm. or court uh, judgments which I had to, to be charged uh, for and be said to be incompetent, mm. relying on the judgments. And we've proved on the two Busasa and the so-called rogue unit that the judges were even themselves wrong. Yeah, yeah. They reached their judgments on wrong facts mm -hmm. and things which were not even on the report. You're being I accused think, on things yeah. that you said in your report you never saw this particular OIG report. Whereas there's no way in my report where yeah. I'm saying that. And that proves that you were actually uh, persecuted for fighting against the establishment? A lot. Um, yeah. I mean, my persecution started with the Reserve Bank matter. Mm -hmm. Remember that matter even reached the Constitutional Court mm -hmm. and also on wrong facts. Uh, Judge Sisi Kampempe and uh, Theron, they then said I must even pay personal costs mm -hmm. doing my work. Aside, yeah. Yes, and then a PJR case was opened. Mm. And now... That you, 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 you fake the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. And it was not the case being accused by our judge, uh, Justice Jafta, that mm. I changed the executive ethics code. I invented mm. my own. Mm. The very same code which the very same constitutional court mm. decided on that mm. um, uh, during the Nkandla judgment. So um, there's a number of uh, inconsistencies yeah. which happened when it comes to me. Yeah. Now the corruption issues, 
I'm bringing all the evidence. Mm. People are blaming us. <laughs> that, <laughs> but why are you yeah. uh, saying the, this? Yeah. 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 But in a nutshell, uh, it's all in the fight for mm. the liberation of the poor, the oppressed, and the marginalized. Yes. Mm. And um, Zuma, when the Section 194 inquiry was... Uh, the report, the report was, was adopted. Mm. She voted against the party line. And Did, no, she she was not there. No, no, no. She she at first when the report was adopted, oh, she the, voted against the party line. Mm. And then when you there was a vote for your impeachment process to mm-hmm. kickstart, she was then present. She was not present. Present, yeah. Politically, what does that mean? Do, do you You know what? Yeah. Um the, the, there's a case of um, is the UDM case now mm-hmm. or the ATM case where the constitutional court was very clear that um, I think it was the speaker refusing to grant a secret uh, vote, vote yes. and saying, you know what, as a member of parliament, you take an oath in terms of the mm-hmm. section 95 of the constitution. Mm-hmm. You will abide by the constitution. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, you know, then that is in conflict to mm-hmm. the party line. Mm-hmm. Um, so she then decided to use her conscience um, yeah. to decide that. And I think that's very powerful for her because she's currently the minister of what women and mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. So the, possibly the, she yeah, thought, you know what, I can't, and she applied her mind because mm. all those uh, 318 um, uh, members of MPs. parliament, mm. they, they, I mean, the fact that they finalized the report without my legal representation, mm. they, uh, 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 I only testified uh, with two issues out of the five. Mm. They didn't read the report. So it was just possibly voting jail, like ships being taken to the slaughter. Mm. And, and that's it. And uh, where's gay for the ANC? Would first time in the history of uh, the ANC voting with the opposition, but yeah. secondly, they got it two thirds, and mm. that two thirds majority they should have been um, voting to change the section twenty five of the constitution and 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 or the issue of the reserve bank. Mm. But then you say you are fighting for the poor and the marginalized when as ANC, but you go so and, and remove the power protector yeah. as if I've murdered or I've killed. Mm. Uh, uh, people and I never killed anyone. I was only trying to protect the public, hold the executive to account because you cannot come and say uh, I'm dealing with corruption. I'm yeah. the president, but you are yourself uh, corrupt. Okay, tell me what is your relationship with the former president uh, Jacob Zuma? Uh, president Zuma, uh, the first time I met him was when I was going to introduce myself as the public protector, mm-hmm. the meet and greet. And thereafter, I think once or twice, uh, having a meeting or where I am, he's there. And then we had a, a, a meeting. And, uh, um, you know, I was saying to somebody, when I was a, a diplomat in China, mm. I used to also listen to how the media, our very about the Gupta, hostile media, yeah. they were reporting. And I was also the one who was saying, no, 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 they, he must account. Mm. Why? You know, sometimes you just believe Everything. Because of the narrative. And they repeat it over yeah. and over and over until yeah. such time you think is the truth. But when I met him, then it was a different, um, you know, a conclusion. Mm-hmm. And when engaging with him as the power protect, we expect you to do this. We investigate under the Executive Members Ethics Act. You need to deal with the, your ministers mm-hmm. if they do this. And then it was a different um, yeah. a, a relation or, or, or my um, uh, conclusion. So yeah. yes, I met him, and uh, um, uh, and and after that, twice or thrice. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel that perhaps he was also a target and persecuted somehow by the uh, sitting president? And would you urge him to vote uh, or rather to join the EFF? <laughs> I think he's persecuted as well because he tried mm-hmm. to um, well deal with a number of issues. I mean, joining BRICS, for instance, which will also empower and change mm-hmm. uh, the lives of the public. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, the issue like, of being jailed it was horrible. I mean, a person who has never, who never. I mean, there is a lot of accused people who will mm-hmm. stay stand in the dock for mm-hmm. criminal. He was there was no charge put to him pleading guilty or not guilty. And 
he ended up being in, incarcerated, which is so wrong. Sure. We, we can't do that. You know, that was so painful. Mm, that convoy, mm. when he was taken to that prison that night, mm. you know, I almost cried. Mm. <laughs> I almost cried. I, no, I'm not I ANC, mean, no but one, that was very no painful. That was a painful to be moment. Like that, and yeah. also the, the, the repercussions, what followed, because mm. South Africa was, you know, in fact, KZN was ungovernable. Mm became chaotic. Yeah, indeed. it was chaotic. Yeah. yeah. Worse than this Phoenix issue, which is being, uh, well, no one is just Talking following about, up yeah, on it and yeah. people died. Uh, you, you voting for EFF president or to Him join EFF. joining EFF. Jacob's, yes, yeah. I think he should. Actually, <laughs> I'm calling upon him to do that. Okay. But uh, possibly the challenge might be, remember, a sitting president mm -hmm. is receiving AMA benefits and everything. Oh, yes. Yeah, so then if he does that, he will lose them. Same applies to Mokhoi ah, But knowing Ugelele is high. I might come to a different no, conclusion. No, he must survive. <laughs> he has yeah, I mean, EFF can well. take care of him. Yeah, as long as EFF <laughs> can offer him something. Possibly of course, of course. I that, mean, yeah. we are in a serious business yeah. of uh, a, a class struggle between yeah. the proletariat and the bourgeoisie. Yes. Yeah. As, as a parting shot, your relationship with the acting PP? Um, you know, I worked with her when um, Parliament appointed her. Because mm. remember, I don't appoint the mm. deputy public protector. A parliamentary process take its course. When he, she mm. arrived, we worked. I was uh, delegating whatever mm. work, but then he, she then showed her true colors. Um, almost towards the end, when um, uh, there was that issue of the uh, uh, hearing things mm. through the the, the grapevine, Ubanu mm. you know, saying no, that this is going to be the judgment which is going to be delivered mm. on one of the matters, and then she distanced herself and all those. Mm -hmm. Then things started to go haywire. Her behavior during my persecution, mm -hmm. something else. Currently, she lied in parliament about me owing two million and all those, mm -hmm. which I don't think it's it's fair and proper. Yeah, mm. and uh, the issue of your pension uh, payout, uh, I'm told your the office of the PP is awaiting parliament to decide whether they will pay out or not. I wonder why awaiting parliament, because that is a public protector issue. Mm. They were the ones who were deducting every month mm. on the issue of graduating. So I'm waiting for them. Mm -hmm. I told them they must pay it. I mean, um, yeah. So um, we're waiting for that. And if they don't, I mean, we will have to take it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, who do you think should be the next uh, public protector? Is uh, uh, advocate uh, Kaleka, Kaleka the one? Do you think she can, she has what it I takes? I think we need uh, somebody who is very much, um, well, um, grounded in um, application of the law and um, understanding the mandate of an ombudsman. Um, she's still early for her, but mm -hmm. I mean, parliament or the ANC has, uh, wants to appoint her. Let them do that. Uh, possibly she'll perform and uh, she needs just to focus on the people. Unfortunately, there's that thing now hanging on her head yes. that she's the president's protector. Yeah. But I hope uh, everything will go according yeah. to plan.